I don't know about you, but I've been enjoying these verse-by-verse Bible studies, so I hope that you've been enjoying it too. And we haven't even hit the tribulation time period yet. Yeah, we've been only covering Revelation 2 and 3, the seven churches. Okay, let's start off with Revelation chapter 2. And we left off at verse 21, Revelation 2, 21. So God gave Jezebel a space to repent, but she didn't. Let's start at verse 22. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. So, uh, behold is an occasional English word in your King James Bible, you'll notice, basically saying, look, or pay attention. See, behold, <clears throat> look, I will cast her into a bed. So he's going to cast Jezebel into a bed, because remember at verse 20, she was known for spiritual sexual sin. See, a spiritual and sexual sin. So because of that, God's uh, giving her what she reaps, what she sows, that she will be cast into the bed that she wants. But this bed will be, look at this, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. So great tribulation means great persecution. Remember, tribulation means hardship, pain, persecution, etc. So God's going to cast Jezebel and the people who joined her in spiritual fornication into a bed of pain, great tribulation. Notice verse 22, except they repent of their deeds. Unless they repent, then the Lord can prevent them from falling into that bed. Now, there's something interesting concerning this one that I'm going to point out concerning Revelation 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 22. We can see a double application right here. So in double application, it could be this concerning the church age. So we are here at Thyatira. Now remember, Thyatira will be covering from 500 to 1,000. Thyatira meant odor of affliction, remember. <clears throat> We're going to eventually cover the next one right here, Sardis. And then eventually Philadelphia. So as we're in Thyatira, remember this was a time period during the Roman Catholic Church system. And uh, there was a lot of persecution going amongst that time period where the Catholic Church of that time period infamously killed many people and tortured many people. It was one of the darkest persecution of that time period that the martyrs suffered under. <clears throat> so because there are people who joined this Catholic Church system. Now remember, we talked about Balaam's doctrine, Balak, and we talked about Nicol uh, the Nicolaitans and Jezebel. And all of that we can see applied to this evil system right here. So in this context in Thyatira, they're focusing on the spiritual figure Jezebel. <clears throat> So Jezebel, she's a real person in the Bible, a wicked queen, who followed uh, the Babylonian religion and system. So that's very important to understand. This church came about from Babylon, a Babylonian religion. This Babylonian religion came and originated from Semiramis and Nimrod. <clears throat> this religion is not extinct. You might say, why? Because this Catholic Church system carried it on up till uh, t today's centuries, actually. It carried all the trappings, all the ordinances. This Babylonian worship was carried on to today. Jezebel, she took the worship system from Babylon. So because of that, she promoted it during her time, during the days of Elijah. When she did that, her spirit of her Babylonian religion... <clears throat> carried on to the Catholic Church time period of 500 to 1000 AD. So remember, when the Lord focuses on different groups of people or names, a lot of times he's looking at through spiritual lenses, remember, spiritual lenses. So this is all within a spiritual context right here. So her spirit is alive. It's not just in this church, but in modern Christian churches today. You see the spirit of Jezebel all over. The spirit of Jezebel... As we looked at before, it consisted of two things which Balaam and Balak joined 
under. It was fornication and idolatry. Now remember, the Babylonian religion of Semiramis and Nimrod, it was infamous where they had worship of idols and sexual activity. As a matter of fact, there was even pedophilia involved and perhaps even bestiality. I do know for a fact the Canaanites, when they worshipped idols, they did bestiality. That much I do know. So all of this was carried on. All of this was carried on. So this spirit in, during this timeline was carried on through this church and religion in a spiritual context, within a spiritual context. So then God says that the children who join with her, why does it say children, huh? Because what do followers of the system refer to this movement as their mother, mother church, and her children? That's what they believe, right? They believe that this church is known as their mother and they're the children. So there's no coincidence in your King James Bible right here. It says, and her children who join with her. So their children is going to join her within this pain, this bed of tribulation. Two contexts could be this, is if you look at the first one, at the next verse, and I will kill her children with death. So God's going to kill all of her children with death. There was one incident that happened that was very, very dreadful and made in the pages of history that dropped a lot of the world's population. It was known as the Black Death or Black Plague. So this incident was really bad during the time when the Catholic Church Empire ruled over the whole world. So that's not a coincidence right there. What happened? God, he was frustrated with this wicked church and system. So then he sent this plague during that time. He said, I will kill her children with death, right? Well, during that time, it was known as the Black Death or the Black Plague that time. If that is the case, then there's going to be something that you want to pay attention to. And I'll explain it more as we hit Sardis, okay? then that means that this date is going to be amended because the Black Death was during the 1300s. So keep in mind this. You're going to hear two different types of date systems, which I want you to keep in mind. There's going to be two different types of date systems. So then Dr. Ruttman, he'll put this at 500 to 1,000. Larkin, he's going to uh, put this all the way up to the 1500s here. Now, Dr. Ruckman, he mentions that this verse right here at verse 23 would be referring to the black death in the spiritual context. If that's the case, then we can amend this date up to 1500 like Larkin would. The reason why Dr. Ruckman puts 500 to 1000, you'll find out a little later on when we hit Sardis and Philadelphia. OK, so these. So you, what you want to keep in mind is these three churches out of the seven churches I'm going to give you two optional dates, okay? So keep that in mind. I'm going to give you Larkin's dating and then Dr. Ruckman's dating right here. And from what I noticed, both ways could work pretty much. So you can take your choice what you want. Now, if you don't want to apply verse 23 to this black death, then what you could do is this. What you could do is that you can instead focus on the doctrinal application here. So the doctrinal application, I hope you remember my teaching, double application, right? If you don't do that with especially prophetic passages, you have wrong interpretation of scripture. Double application is so important. There's a spiritual application for the Christian church. All of this was spiritual so far, right? We talked about the spiritual Je Jezebel, her spiritual system during this timeline, et cetera, et cetera. But the second application is a doctrinal application, which is to the tribulation. So let's look at it from a tribulation lens then. So then the people who join her system, they're going to be into great tribulation. Is that true? Yes, look at Revelation 18. Notice this is the timeline of the tribulation. By the way, guess what? The system doesn't change no matter what application you put it. You can put a spiritual or doctrinal application, but it will not change the fact that this wicked religion and church system 
is still applicable for both applications. So let's look at Revelation 18. We know Revelation 18 is talking about what? Babylon. Mystery Babylon. And who is Mystery Babylon? We saw it before. So because of that, look at Revelation 18. Look at verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partaker of her sins, and that ye receive not her what? Plague. See, these children are joining her at the tribulation. But look at what the Bible says. The Bible says right here concerning these people that she is burning. Verse 18. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? So notice that this is a city that's burning to the ground. And there is no doubt that when you look at verse chapter 17, verse 18, chapter 17, verse 18, there is only one city you can ever think of in this entire world that qualifies as a religious form that rules over kings over all the earth, and that's Rome. That's Rome. So there is no doubt. So this system is going to apply to Babylon mystery at the tribulation. So God will cast her children into her bed of tribulation because she is going to burn at the tribulation. But notice that the Bible says, I will cast them into great tribulation, right? So meaning that it already gave you a hint that this is referring to the tribulation timeline. See that? So it's already giving you away the fact that this is going to be a tribulation timeline. We're not going to turn to this verse, but if you look at Revelation chapter 7, it talks about the tribulation saints, and it's worded as, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. So it, that phrase is undoubtedly, it can refer to the tribulation timeline. Now, we can simply say it can be referring to great hardship, you know, great pain, great affliction. That's fine, too. I think that's uh, workable when I look at this verse in Revelation 7. But you can also see the possibility this can refer to the tribulation timeline because of that exact wording there that coincidentally matches with Revelation 7 and Matthew 24, which talks about the tribulation and then talks about a great tribulation. Now, this is very interesting. If... I'm not saying it is, but if we can take it for the fact that this is going to be referring to the tribulation timeline, then this might be something interesting, is that if you read verse 22, this could be an application to something pre-tribulation, a pre-tribulation rapture. You might say, why? Because in verse 22, it says right here, if they continue to join this Babylon church system, then they're going to be cast into the what? The Great Tribulation timeline. Meaning then these people can escape the Great Tribulation timeline. So if we're going to take it as this other application to the church, then this could be applicable to the timeline of the church age that if you get out of her, then you don't have to go to the Great Tribulation with her when the Antichrist rules over the world. So this can be a good proof text for a pre-tribulation rapture. Now remember, I'm saying that it could be referring to the timeline. I'm not saying that it is. So you can't really use this as 100% proof text for a pre-tribulation rapture. But if it is referring to a timeline, then yes, it will definitely have to be a proof text for pre-tribulation rapture. That's the case. But even if that's not so, I don't worry about that. There are plenty of verses in the Bible that shows a pre-tribulation rapture anyway. So I'm not going to explain it here. For those of you who are upset at me online, I know that you get upset at me whenever I say pre-tribulation rapture. Just watch Chronology of the Apocalypse, please. Chronology of the Apocalypse, it will show you persuasively.